To South Sudan now, where the United Nations is monitoring parliamentary debates on extending the presidential term by three years. It may have serious repercussions for last week's peace deal. The UN Security Council has previously warned that additional sanctions could be imposed if peace is not restored in South Sudan. It's expected to make a decision on sanctions within the week. CGTN's Nick Harper reports from New York. The United Nations is closely monitoring this potentially destabilizing development of extending Salva Kiir's presidency. The deputy spokesman for the Secretary General, Farhan Huck, said that the UN would not comment on the country's internal political situation, but he did say that the UN wants to ensure that there continues to be inclusive peace talks in South Sudan and that the parties can resolve their differences peacefully. Well, with the opposition saying that it is illegal and warning that it will undermine the peace process, the UN Security Council is likely to be concerned, especially when the ink is still fresh from last week's peace agreement signed by President Keir and the opposition leader Rick Machar. The United Nations obviously takes any threat to peace very seriously. And with reports that the ceasefire, which accompanied that peace accord, has already been broken, the UN will now need to weigh up next steps and whether to add further sanctions. The United Nations Security Council is certainly keeping South Sudan on the front burner. It has two meetings scheduled in the next week to discuss the situation in the country. On Thursday, a closed-door meeting will look at the possibility of adding more sanctions and to hear the view of an official from the United Nations Peacekeeping Operations Department. While at the meeting the following Thursday, the Council will renew the current sanctions regime, potentially for another 12 months, and re-adopt the mission's mandate for the Sanctions Committee panel of experts. Well, in May, the Security Council gave South Sudan a June 30th deadline to end the conflict and threatened to impose a travel ban and asset freezes on six South Sudanese leaders if the fighting continued. Included on the list of names was the country's defence minister and the former army chief. Well, if hostilities are resumed and if the presidential term is extended, the UN may use this opportunity to not just extend those current sanctions, but potentially put other ones in place as well. Nick Harper, CGTN, New York. Well, let's continue with tracking the South Sudan story. Joining us from Kampala is analyst Angelo Izama. Uh, Angelo, thank you for joining us. Um, from what you know, what is the situation right now in South Sudan? Well, as far as um, I can tell, the situation remains very fluid, um, especially for civilians. Uh, part of the complication, Karen, is that even if the, um, uh, the current peace process is, um, involves, you know, President Kiir and his, uh, uh, his arch-rival, Riyak Masha, there are, in fact, you know, numerous other armed groups that are watching this process. Um, they recognize that the... Um, the current UN-led uh, uh, process is an opportunity really not just to stabilize South Sudan but also to be included in what happens next in the government. And um, uh, because of this fluid situation and also because the, the, no one really has got um, uh, secure control over um, the armed uh, forces spread all over the, uh, the country, uh, civilians are constantly at risk of, um, of um, uh, shooting deaths and, and attempts by one group uh, uh, to have their voices heard by starting a fight. Well, uh, obviously adding to this fluid situation is the possibility Karen? of an extension of the presidential term. How is that likely to affect the peace process, would you say, if this presidential term is extended? Well, there would be no peace process if the presidential term is extended. The whole point of bringing these uh, two groups together is, as far as we can tell, really to try and reconstitute some kind of government of national unity. You, must, you may recall that the current uh, conflict actually began when President Kiir attempted to unilaterally 
uh, make changes to the constitution and consolidate his own power. So I think, you know, he, the extension of the presidential term is again an attempt by him uh, to create, um, through a separate legal process outside the uh, peace negotiations, uh, a sort of a solid base for him. Because, well, if his term is extended, uh, then he can guarantee that he remains in the chair and, you know, frustrates any other kind of arrangement that may come out of negotiation with uh, various parties, including Dr. Riyak Masha. And, um, Angelo, the rival leaders have been playing the blame game on who violated the ceasefire first. What practical steps can the African Union take, do you think, to resolve the conflict in South Sudan? As you know, that you, uh, the neighbors of southern Sudan, particularly the East African countries, have been enablers of a lot of the looting of that town by South Sudanese elites. I'm in Kampala here, but um, I, I can assure you that you know, in Nairobi, in Burundi, in Chigali, or in Khartoum, uh, southern elite leaders, military officers and generals and civil servants have been taking money out of South Sudan, basically disinvesting in their own country. One of the ways that the UN can, uh, uh, the African Union for that matter, can act is to create its own sanctions regime against these individuals and further tighten the operating room uh, for the southern elite and draw them out. I think so far the process already, is, is, it's, it involves too many external actors and the African Union can uh, probably do better, one, by making the sanctions hurt in the areas most near and the financial systems n uh, nearest to South Sudan. But another way of intervening directly uh, for the African Union is to put civilians at the heart of their, of their analysis of their situation. There's too much talk of um, <coughs> the leadership of Southern Sudan. But in fact, there's a terrible humanitarian crisis the uh, uh, reports of mass atrocities uh, for years now. Uh, I think that the African Union should really consider some kind of um, uh, protection force inside South Sudan, especially knowing that there is no proper standing army uh, in that country as we speak. Okay, thank you very much for your analysis. Uh, that was Angelo Izama there, an analyst uh, for us um, from Kampala.